How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the podcast again. Um, so here's what I've been meaning to do is to define for you what a quality ballet education is. So what that means is what does it mean for you as students and dancers to receive it? And what does it mean for teachers to provide it? Okay. So receiving a ballet education, a quality ballet education means to realize your potential, right? The full extent of your potential physically and intellectually and artistically free of injury without injury, right? To provide a quality ballet education kind of looks like this. So if you, if a teacher is qualified to teach placement, let's say my method, what that means is that given a set of circumstances, you can predict the outcome accurately and achieve it, right? So this is, for example, what I did with Misty is okay. Given the circumstances, however chaotic they might be, I know how to deliver the result and I always do. And that's kind of the hallmark of what I do. Um, so that's what it means to have the ability to provide a quality ballet education so that you understand. In other words, it's kind of a one way to look at it, sort of, although it's not this linear is it's kind of a reverse engineering thing, right? So you understand the result that you want to get a month from now, a week from now, six months from now, six years from now. And then you have the understanding of how to work backwards to get it. It's not that simple. It's not that linear, but that's kind of the idea, right? Now, let me give students and, and parents an understanding, well, and dancers being coached, an understanding of the difference between what it is to be taught by myself and perhaps other people. Now, I'm not saying all other people. I'm just saying this is just one anecdotal example of what I do that's different from what I see often, right? Not everywhere, but just often. My role in teaching you is that I'm always going to give you more than you give me. That's the deal. That is the deal. That's what it is to be a teacher and for you to be a student. It doesn't matter if you're a dance student, um, learning how to teach, dance, coach, choreograph, whatever. If I'm in a position of um, educating you or mentoring you, it's for me to give you more than you give me. That's the deal, right? But that's just not how it's done everywhere else. And I've, I've experienced it myself, studying dance, studying teaching, to where the teacher or teachers end up kind of drawing your energy from you to them. So it's a situation where it's either, you know, there's a variety of ways that this manifests itself. So, you know, teachers demand a variety of different things and there's strings attached everywhere and you have to and you can't do this and they want to run and control your life and do all of these shady things. That's them taking more from you than they're giving. Whereas I give you far more than you can give me, in fact, right? So that's the difference between receiving a quality ballet education and providing a quality ballet education than that which lacks quality and understanding, which is the norm, right? So to close this one out, the problems with ballet education create, have created all of the other problems. So the only thing that needs to be addressed in ballet right now is education. And now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. While ballet is, is effectively closed, and if I had to guess and, and bet money, real money, I would say for another year and a half to two years before we might recognize ballet as something that it was, although ballet as it was, I think is done permanently. Uh, and there's a couple ways to look at that. One, it's, you can look at that as there's an opportunity to create the kind of ballet world that we want. And frankly, those who get on board with reforming ballet education or just, just doing it right from the beginning, getting the fundamentals right, are going to shape the future of ballet all the way downstream. So from the education all the way to the final product. 
those who uh, make the decision to remain anchored to this past, I think are not even going to get a vote and they're going to get eclipsed, right? It's just what, it's just what happens, right? So we are, let's say the Tesla of Valley. If we're going to be driving in a Tesla, those who want to remain anchored to the past are going to be in past cars like the Lada, for example, right? Or the old VW bugs or something, you know, something that's very inefficient that nobody would want to drive in right now in the modern world. So we need a, a modern ballet world for the modern world in every way in which we can measure that choreographically, pedagogically, intellectually, philosophically, etc. Okay? Let me know what you think.